And we're off, and it's Lux Brush in the lead. <laughs> yeah, because Ember's staying home playing Bravely Default. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready? Ready. Hello, I am Lux Brush. And this is Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 17, Some Pony to Watch Over Me. I like the way they set up the tension in the first scene. Ah, uh, where they're all waiting outside going, no matter what, we'll be there for you. <laughs> Even though this could change your life forever, irrevocably. Even though you knew it wasn't going to be anything too serious, it's just like, ooh, they do such a good job of building up the tension. Also, that little moment of Apple Bloom's eyes, like, come on, come on, looking back and forth, it really shows her... <laughs> this scene really shows the characters growing up because they're deciding... Well, I should say it shows that Apple Bloom has grown up a little bit because they're deciding whether or not to leave her at home alone for a period of time. Which is a huge step in responsibility. I mean, it's its own rite of passage to be able to stay home alone while your parents, family, whomever is out. And they haven't called a babysitter. Or in this case, full sitter. Also, I guess there's a light around that corner to get those shadows. Though, seriously, I like the fact that the that Apple Loom and them act all grown up like, thank you, we appreciate your decision, and they walk off, and they wait till they think they're out of sight, then, oh my god, yes! <laughs> that was nice. And I like the way the adults just exchanged looks and smiled. And at least this is an episode with Applejack in it where she's not being stubborn, just overly protective. I was still going to call it stubborn. <laughs> I know it's overprotective, but she's stubbornly refusing to see that Apple Bloom can take care of herself, and she's stubbornly refusing to give Apple Bloom that chance. Yeah, I knew you could read it that way, but I don't think it was intended that way. I think it was more intended of her just being overly protective. No, the, the intent was overly protective, but it's very easy to spin it as, oh, Applejack's being stubborn. Again. The intent wasn't that way this time. Other times, it's mostly like that. But this time, no, they were trying to make her seem overly protective. And for some reason, as she was doing this stuff, all I kept thinking is, this is how I see Twilight would handle this situation. Oh, you mean the constant checking? Constant checking and being... It's like she was really freaked out about the situation to the point where she wasn't acting like herself at all. It was like, overly cautious. I must protect everything. I must protect everything. Apple Bloom must not get hurt by the smallest thing. You do know how to open a drawer. Oh, no, of course you don't. First, you open the drawer. <laughs> and then you take out a spoon, not a fork, because a fork is sharp and pointy. I also first thought this episode was going to be about Apple Bloom learning to be responsible, but it turned out to be more about Applejack learning that your sister's growing up and that she can't take care of herself. And the overprotectiveness, the level that we see in this episode, has been done in other series. It usually occurs after the character who is being protected has what the protective character considers a very near miss. To totally destroy my cr street cred, in an episode of Jane and the Dragon, <laughs> Jane is riding the dragon who does a somersault while she's riding him, so she falls off. And he catches her, and after that near miss, totally freaks out and watches over her in an extremely overprotective manner. And Applejack had that same level of intensity, but the amount of trouble that Apple Bloom got into, I use the word trouble very loosely, was very minor, contrasted with Applejack's reaction. And it was very cliche at the moment Applejack arrives and when something actually goes wrong. <laughs> and it's really not that big of wrong. And I love how Apple Bloom points out that, you know, this is technically your fault. Because if she hadn't startled Apple Bloom, Apple Bloom wouldn't have fallen and nothing would have gotten knocked over. Because the house was in perfectly fine shape before then. Also, um, during the whole checklist scene, I love how... She opens up a closet and shows a bunch of hats and ribbons, which completely destroys a bunch of head cannons about the fact that Applejack's hat is special, like it was an heirloom or something. 
Nope, it's just one of many Stetsons she happens to have. She probably goes through like three or four a week with how much work she does. Entirely possible. What I like is that, okay, all the hats and bows are actually set up like that. You know, I actually thought that Apple Bloom took the time to tie a ribbon into a bow each day. Not that it was a bow hair clip. <laughs> yeah, I get to my, I'll, I'll get to my description of that later. And then there's another scene where a small bit of head cannon might die, depending on how you interpret the scene. The scene where Apple Bloom bucks the tree and some apples fall into the net. Most head cannon says she's not quite old enough or has been trained enough to do that yet. Well, depending on when that head cannon first originated, there may have been enough time progression for her to actually grow a little bit. Because part of the theme of this episode is that Apple Bloom is growing up. I do like how there's a good build-up to the point where Apple Bloom finally snaps and goes, Okay, I need to do something drastic here. Hey, wait. Didn't Applejack say she was going to go on a dangerous route? Yes, because the best way to prove that you don't need protection is to disobey and run off and do something that's incredibly dangerous. <laughs> Applejack almost had the lesson down when Scootaloo accidentally busted them out. Because she was going, oh, maybe I don't need to be so overprotective. You know, you're here and everything's fine. <laughs> Except that everything's not fine because Apple Bloom ran off and Scootaloo just blew our cover. Well, Scootaloo blowing the cover is another kind of cliche moment of the friend being overexcited at something and then, oops, I let the cat out of the bag. Boy, is that a big cat. Also, apparently hair clip bows are the solution to any problem. <laughs> You need to run away. See, I look just like you. No, you don't. But I have your hair bow on. But you don't look like me. Yes, I do. No, you don't. <laughs> I guess it's the um, Superman Clark Kent situation. Glasses on, I'm Clark Kent. Glasses off, I'm Superman. You can't tell the difference now, can you? Well, it's more that the bow is the only thing showing above the covers. Because when Sweetie Belle was first laying down and... She was laying on her back, so her horn was showing. I was like, no, no, you lay on your side facing away from the door, and you pull the covers up over your head, so the only thing that shows is the bow. Mm-hmm. Scootaloo points that out, though. Sweetie, though, lay like Apple How does she lay? Like she does everything else. Sassy. Apparently she does everything sassy. <laughs> yeah, I did not have that in my interpretation of Apple Bloom. I mean, she has sass, because she backtalks sometimes but that would not have been my definition of how do I do this with sass? I don't have time to translate that. And before I forget, I love how, let's sing about this. Nope, no time for a song. We must move the plot along. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to go to that. Because the Cutie Mark Crusaders have songs fairly often, so it was a good place that they would normally have a song. But considering how quickly Applejack keeps checking in, no, no time for song. Go. I also like that we're acknowledging that we're singing in the show. Uh, also, convenient haystacks are convenient. What, what was that just in case Applebloom decides to go out the window, Applejack? That way she won't hurt herself? What? Well, until Applejack truly didn't know that Applebloom had run off, I actually thought that she did that on purpose so that Applebloom could run off, and then she was just going to shadow, shadow Applebloom. So that she could prove her opposite point of, yes, you still need me. But she'd be right there, so nothing really bad could happen. Another point in that scene there is the fact that Sweetie Belle was kind of cute when she was sleeping. <laughs> Though that weird face she was making with her lips, like, oh, okay. That actually reminded me a little bit of uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas animation. Something about her lips reminded me of the Grinch's smile in that. His mm. closed mouth smile, not the open mouth one. Also, I like how Applejack asked them, so didn't you guys hear me talk about how dangerous that was? I'm, and, I'm actually, and I'm actually thinking, no, actually, they never heard you talk about how dangerous it was. Applebloom, I don't even think, mentions how dangerous it is. She just mentions it's a hard journey to wherever the um, delivery is going. So Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo actually don't know how dangerous the journey is. And then we go into that wonderful, crazy list of items where you're first thinking, has Applejack actually snapped? Why would you need fireproof boots? A lion taming's chair? 
a snake charming flute and ricotta cheese. Like, what is this? The wild version of Rachel Ray show? Oh, and can we go backwards for a minute? When did Applejack replace Apple Bloom's bed with a crib? Come on. Well, I'm thinking all she did was add the railings onto the side of the bed. Still, come on. <laughs> and all the pillows around it. Yeah. And then we go into the fire swamp. I wonder if there's any rodents of unusual size running around this swamp. I don't know. It depends on whether or not the Chimera can agree whether or not to eat them. Oh, you spoiled my line about- Holy smokes, the Chimera! Nice reveal, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the animation of the reveal. Though it is kind of off on what a Chimera actually is. From what I understand, a Chimera is a combination of lion, goat, and snake. Not saber-toothed tiger, goat, and snake. True, but they still stuck with cat, goat, snake. They may not have wanted to have a... Oh, I've got it. I have a theory, at least. Since the Chimera is female, the lion would have been a lioness. No mane. Children's show. How do you tell a lion? Because it has a mane. How do you tell a tiger? Because it has stripes. Uh, so they want to make it more distinct than just a female lion without a mane. Yeah, so instead of having a golden or yellow cat, they went, oh, if we make it a tiger, then everyone will know it's a tiger. Or if we make it a yellow cat, not everyone may know it's a lion. I do like the design of the Chimera, though. They did a very good job on it. Definitely like the design and the animation of it. Even like that they were sisters. <laughs> yeah, that, of course they'd be sisters. And did you catch the Jungle Book reference? The snake size changing? I didn't grow up watching Disney movies for nothing. <laughs> we have a nice tension buildup in the beginning with the approach of the Chimera and the, you know, don't move, this is a safe spot. And then we have... We want the pie. Okay, Apple Bloom doesn't want to give you the pies, but that's okay. And then we go on to, no, we're going to eat you. Like, ah, sentient creature eating another sentient creature in a children show. No. Oh, yeah, I was going to bring up the fact that, you know, we won't talk about death directly, but we'll hint about other creatures doing it to other creatures. <laughs> well, but it's a chimera, so. And it gives tension, and the kids won't get too scared, I don't think. Because their whole design with the creatures is always to make them fun, but have a little bit of edge to them, but not enough to actually scare little children. No, but we had some potential there for them to actually commiserate about sisters. You know, we were starting to work towards them bonding on the subject of having your sister constantly over your shoulder. And then we lost it. <laughs> yeah, but they were running out of time in the episode, too. Well, if we hadn't had Applejack open the door 40 times and go, <laughs> cup of water, blanket, did I hear a cough? <laughs> Are you still breathing? I don't hear any breathing. <laughs> that was me adding it, ad living there. And Applejack's boots kind of reminded me of her power pony design. Hmm. Oh, you're right. And her character was kind of a Batman type and being ridiculously prepared. That does kind of fit Applejack. Mm -hmm. Funny thing about snake charming flutes is it's actually not the sound of the flute that charms the snake. It's the movements of the flute that charms the snake. Because if you notice, snake charmers move the snake charming flute back and forth. It's actually that movement that gets the snake to go, ooh. Because the snake actually can't, from what I understand, hear the flute that much. And... Yeah, she's definitely her power pony for summer because her saddlebags are kind of like a utility belt. She pulled out everything from there. I love how the chair just folded out. Yeah, I'm wondering if Pinkie Pie helped her pack that. <laughs> also, I think because of the way the Chimera react when Applejack first showed up, she may have gone through this location once before because she knew what to bring along and the Chimera went, you or her. And that's why she immediately went after Applejack. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, Apple Boom was closer. She could have gotten to Apple Boom, then gone after Applejack. I would have liked it if they would have had Applejack do something to get the snake caught in the tree, instead of them just running along and oh, suddenly it's in the tree. Yeah, that was a little. <clears throat> that was a little convenient. Though I do like how like ooh, ricotta. 
Like, I got food. I'm like, why it's a goat? Traditionally, goats are herbivores. Ricotta is a cheese. Cheese is made from milk. Milk comes from dairy animals like cows and goats. Uh, I was kind of okay with it when I thought about it. I was like, eh, dairy's okay because they drink milk when they're younger. So I think they'd appreciate it. It's not like they're eating meat of another goat or something. Oh, no, I, I don't mean it that way in that it's disturbing. You know, we did have a episode in season, I think it may have been all the way back in season one, where Pinkie Pie's talking to one of the cows and asking if she came to get some cookies to go with her milk. I don't have a problem with dairy. I'm just wondering, why dairy? You know, snake charming flute's kind of obvious. It's a snake. Lion tamer's chair, okay, it's a giant cat. That kind of makes sense. Ricotta cheese. I don't get it. I'm thinking because it's cheese and goats eat anything. And cheese can come from goats, so that's what their association was. Plus, it's one of those fun words to say. <laughs> Plus, if you said it right, it could have come out rigota. Okay. You may hit me for that later. Oh, and now we have bayou ponies. I think it's a reference to something, but I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> I think there's another reference in there, too, because there may have actually been an airbender reference with that green-haired pony. The one that looked like it was wearing dreadlocks. It reminded me a lot of one of the two swamp benders, as I would call them, from The Last Airbender. Mm. Now, I didn't draw an airbender's reference. The only thing that struck me, things I should say, is it reminded me a little bit of the comic, actually, when Rarity was at her, air quotes, spa, even though those were more hippie ponies than hillbilly. And then the way the one pony was dancing on the table, those dance movements reminded me of a Peanuts character. I don't remember which one danced like that, but it was very distinctive to me. It was reminding me of something I just didn't associate with Peanuts. I actually thought of Scooby-Doo, I think. I know what the lesson was trying to get across, but it could be misconstrued as get your family to notice you by running away and doing stupid stuff. That was pretty much the lesson I got, because if Apple Bloom had just stayed home and stayed out of trouble, we saw that the episode was going to where Applejack was able to start realizing that her fears were groundless. Instead, we have Apple Bloom running away, which we always want to discourage children from running away. Mm-hmm doing something dangerous, succeeding, and then even though she's probably going to be punished for it, also being praised for it. Yeah, kind of a mixed message there. And like I said, I know they were trying to get across the other one, which is which is Applejack learning that you can be overprotective sometimes, and being overprotective can be a problem. And I think there was supposed to be a lesson for Apple Bloom, but I couldn't really divine one from the episode. I think they might have been trying to go for, even when you grow up you still need your family does not in the same way because you know when the chimera asked her any last words she's like i wish my sister was here so you know that even though you're growing up there are still times when you need help mm -hmm. and how much trouble are scootaloo and sweetie bell in you know aiding and abetting a runaway and rarity is kind of a strict person so she's probably going handling at least the punishing for sweetie bell but Rarity works as a babysitter, and she can def full sitter, and can definitely scold both of them. But my understanding is that Sweetie Belle still lives with her and Rarity's parents, so ultimately that punishment should come from their parents. And I don't think we've ever seen Scootaloo's parents. Not as of yet. We have seen our house, though. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is the kind of stuff that usually you get dragged in front of your parents for. So it's like, okay, how much trouble are these guys in? And are we still going to have the Cutie Mark Crusaders unsupervised all the time? Because they do a lot of stuff on their own. When they're in the clubhouse, even though it's on Sweet Apple Acres property, they're by themselves, completely unsupervised, up in a tree. And they went to the Crystal Kingdom for the Equestria Games flag team tryouts without any parents. They didn't go on their own because it was part of a school trip. And when they went back, if I recall correctly, they had 
Rainbow Dash's help in getting back in time, but they do a lot of stuff on their own. So is that now going to be curtailed because they pulled this deception? I think you're expecting too much of the show. <laughs> no, I'm I'm saying that I don't think anything's really going to change. Uh, it's probably going to change a little bit, but it probably won't show up until the, until a plot of an episode needs it. <laughs> Cause that seems to be the theme with um, My Little Pony is they will bring something up later if they need it for the story. Like Flutter Guy, or whether or not Twilight is being treated as a princess, you know, stuff like that. True, and now that we got to see Applejack's route, I want to know what Big Mac's route was like, because Granny Smith said that she didn't know which one was more difficult. <laughs> so if Applejack's route had a fire swamp and a chimera, what the heck is on Big Mac's? <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to think of, well, it, you know, it's like it's like something like no normal person would be scared of, but Big Mac is like ah, oh. just to make it funny, like a field of butterflies or something, mm -hmm. or fluffy bunnies. Oh look, at they're so. Oh my God, they're not cute. Well, if they're the jackalope bunnies from the comics, no, they're not. <laughs> and how is Apple Bloom able to pull that cart and not even like look tired? It's a cart full of apple pies. How was she even able to adjust the harness to her height? Hmm. And speaking of that apple cart, I think some of it was computer generated, you know, 3D modeled mm. because it rotated around and everything when, Al when Apple Bloom was turning around in circles and stuff like that pretty quickly and very smoothly. So I don't think it was actually um, flash animated. It was done in 3D and then layered in with the rest of the 2D flash. They've done it before in the episodes, like how they upgraded the Timberwolves to actually be 3D models instead of flat 2D like they were in the original. Mm -hmm. Overall, it was a decent episode to me. The overprotectiveness joke was overplayed, and it overplayed very quickly. Between the helmet running gag and the constant opening the door to check on Apple Bloom, that really got old quickly. And then the mixed message, I don't really think that that's what you want for a children's show. Watching it as an adult, it's not a problem, and that's actually a theme in less children-oriented shows. So it's something reasonable for a story. It's a bit contradictory, possibly, to the message that the episode was trying to get across. There were places obviously where I could see improvement despite this whole, oh yeah, you're starting to grow up. It felt really more like a filler episode, that there wasn't a huge amount of character development and definitely no plot progression for the overarching what's in the box. Not that everything needs to be a key episode or about the box, but at least it wasn't Ooh, Applejack is doing nothing but be stubborn. Or focusing on, we have to make money to keep the farm in the family. So, it was nice that it, for an Applejack episode to not be focused on those two items. And I agree with you on the points about the episode being confusing, the message not coming through as clear as I think they wanted it to, and being a bit mixed up. And it definitely could be misconstrued as... If you want attention from your family, run away! Or you want your family to pay attention to you in the right way, run away! Yeah, you don't want to do that too much in a children's show. But overall, it's a nice episode. A little confusing on the message they're trying to get across. But it's enjoyable if you don't really think about the message too much. Thank you for listening. If you like our work, please subscribe. And if you want to keep up to date on what I'm doing with the drawings for my episodes, you can follow me on Tumblr. And if you want to see the full resolutions of the images I draw during each episode, please visit me on DeviantArt. Links in the description. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 17, Some Pony to Watch Over Me. Nice song reference, too. I thought so, too. <laughs>